first things first, you'll need to select your head coach. Bearing in mind that you'll also be utilizing the playbook that he favors in the NFL. If you're curious as to how your team's coming together, keep its overall rating. You don't need me to tell you the higher the better. So make your selections count. Oh, how about this for a tough choice early on? Yeah, that's the kind of guy who can elevate that entire unit. He's a very talented addition. And that's a pick that'll solve a lot of problems out there. He'll fit in nicely. In these middle rounds, you have to start asking yourself, do you settle for what's available now, or do you try and push your luck? What to do here? Build up the interior of your line, or get that skilled player to add another weapon? Boy, you can't go wrong with anybody out of this group. Where to now? Do you get yourself a big brute for the trenches? or someone who can really help you out at the playmaking type spot. One thing's for sure in this round, you're gonna walk. Yeah, I don't think you needed a crystal ball to see that pick coming. That's all about loyalty and familiarity right there. And now is where you need to make these last picks count. Time to fill any holes you can before it's too late. Always a tough decision, offense or defense. I'm not sure that this selection is going to provide a huge punch, but he's at least a guy that does have some upside. And now, which side of the football will they address here? Some interesting options either way. And with time running short, you've got to hope some guys fall into your lap or you could be left with some real holes on your roster. Curious as to how you did? Check it out here on the Drafts. And with that, you've just wrapped up putting together your very first Draft Champion squad. From here, you can modify your lineup if you'd like, or if you're ready to go, feel free to jump right into game number one. Thank you, Larry. Brandon Gordon, along with Charles Davis here in the booth. We are set for a spectacular draft champions matchup and some spectacular talent on your screen right now. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get down to the field for kickoff. And it's the birth of a new club as we're underway in draft champions. This will be fielded at the six. <laughs> and he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. They'll come out in the pistol. On first and 10, here's Breeze. And Escobar has it left side. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and that'll make it a second down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him 
I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Zach Kerr coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. On second down, here's Breeze. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Quarterbacks love slam routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. I know it's the first half, but it's still hard to curb the enthusiasm for that stop. Third and one, and the offense can't get there. The defensive team has got them very good about themselves. Great job out leveraging the offense. Oh, looked like they got someone to jump there. And if that's the case, this will be a first down. Now the offense lining up first and ten. After the penalty, it's McCoy. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. And by Dotson. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy could be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Breeze now on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Calais Campbell in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot. But he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. Breeze to throw on second down. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. That one good for 21 yards. And they'll be faced with a third in inches. So play number 10 now coming. It's been a long opening drive, but this is third down. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Let's just go ahead and state the obvious. You're going to want a big game out of that guy. Big time run to get things started. But even more importantly, Coming in on the road, trying to silence the crowd, take them out of it a little bit, slow down the emotions of the game, and get yourselves under control if you're like, yeah, we're going to be okay on the road. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. LaShawn McCoy taking it in from two yards out. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. No, oh, he missed the PAT. No good on the extra point, so a letdown there. And this will stay a six-point ball game. Now after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. as they begin on the ground. And he's brought down. 
It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. So it'll be first down here after the run. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line, showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. His odometer is not totally turned over yet. On second down, Peterson. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Goff wants to throw on third and one. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And he's not going to get to the marker. And that's a turnover on downs. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think. And it's a fumble. Caught left side by Funches. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. And defensively, maybe an opportunity miss there. No doubt about it. When that ball's out, all you're thinking about as a defender is this is our chance to make a huge play. Instead, he's able to recover his own fumble. And Big usually, sigh of relief. Huh? Yeah, usually those wide receiver fumbles, there's open space around for the defense, but not there. He hops right back on it. And whistle blown. A timeout here is taken, and it's taken by the kicking team. It's just so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool him. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on fourth, turned it over in their own territory. But the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On first down, gone. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a pickup of 19. And it'll be good for a Denver first down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. And they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make them. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And now a first down following that long game. All right, here we go. Watch it now, Barney, Barney. To the air again. Gone. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. They'll run for it with Peterson. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like it's something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Here we go now. Now a play fake here on first down. He gets it into the hands of Larry Fitzgerald. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Anytime you call man coverage against Larry Fitzgerald, you're really holding your breath as a defensive guy because his ability to run such precise routes and use that big frame that he has, that body against you, it's going to be very difficult to break passes up against him. Yeah, when you make nine Pro Bowls in your first 12 years, you might want to give him a little bit more coverage than that. Yeah, it's not just athletic ability. He's a thinking man's receiver as well. All right, here we go. Three and eight. On second down, here's gone. And that's complete to the right side. It's Allen. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. It's a gain of five. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. They'll run it. Here's Peterson. And Peterson, what happened? He lost the football. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. What a catch and one-handed, and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play, and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves, they do have a little grip to them, they? Don't get they get a little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, they're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Rasheed Hagman in there to get him for a loss of five. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. And here comes play number six on this drive. Shift together here from the D-line. Now McCoy trying to run inside, but nothing there. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. They'll try again with McCoy. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. 
Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. And with a play clock running out, Doug Peterson decides to take a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Here's McCoy. A gain of seven might change the thought process here as they have some options on fourth and goal. Fourth down, ball's at the one-yard line. Do you go for it, or do you go ahead and kick a field goal? I think because you're going to end up giving a long field, even if you don't score, I put my trust in my defense. I go for it and try and get the points. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good. And that will make our score 9 to nothing. So a big one there is that gives them a little cushion. And you know, here in the fourth quarter, the fact that they were able to bleed some time off the clock and put points on the board, even if it's only three, that could turn out to be the drive that ultimately wins them the game. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time, the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard. Had a drive going and pushed it past the... And a big loss here as he's taken down. Bobby Wagner in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot. Patriot. Hurry up. Hurry up. Here's Goff now on second down. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. That's a bold strike right there, taking it downfield and putting some air on it. But how about the coverage? Able to get his hands across the receiver and bat the ball down. Third and long. It's gone. Allen's got it over the middle. And he's brought down after a good game. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Now gone. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. Goff now to throw. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet. He's going to have the first down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, no, 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 especially no, 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 no. the finishing part no, 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 of getting no, 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 his feet in bounds, no, 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 no. toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. Flush to his right. And that will be incomplete as well. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. Dancing to his left. He can run for it, and he will. <laughs> It's a pickup of 17 there. And on fourth and long, somehow they're able to keep the drive going. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in. But somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Adrian Peterson, 33 yards. And the Broncos draw a bit closer. 
And they put it in the end zone, which was job one. Now they have to convert. And then it's decision time, isn't it? Yeah, so this is what all teams go through. You look at the clock, you're inside two minutes. Look at your timeouts. Make that onside kick decision. Yeah, how do you feel about your defense, where you are in terms of the scoreboard, and the time left on the clock, as you noted, so many things to go through. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. They've got the lead by three, late stages of the game. What's the message here? Just hang on to the football. Is it that simple? That's exactly right, because ball security is paramount. And you got a small cushion. A field goal can tie you, but you don't even think that way. Just take care of the ball, close out the game. Will they close it out? We're about to find out. Breeze is looking to throw. And that is incomplete here. Gavin Escobar, his big tight end, was the intended receiver. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. On third down, here's McCoy. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now here's a whistle and a timeout. It's called by the receiving team here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. They practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. They'll look to throw. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. 15 yards through the air and a first down. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, Get a guy still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds. He got it done. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Oh, no, he lost the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They have the three-point lead. Defense did their job. Now, late game. Although it looks good, you know the coaches, they haven't counted this as a victory yet. I agree with you totally. Big applause for the defense, but no one has taken their headset off on the sidelines. They don't believe this game is over. The offense has to close this one out by taking care of the football. And they'll try to close it out now. Drew Brees with a kneel down, and that ought to do it. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. After this one, it's always tough to lose a game. But after this one, Charles, your offensive coordinator, just a little head scratching going on probably. Trying to figure out what he's going to do to jumpstart his team. The defensive coordinator, on the other hand, he's going around. Way to go, fellas. Great job. Keep it going. Things will turn for us.